there. Welcome to a King Size Session Minute. This is the first one we're ever doing. I'm Dave. This is Ruddy. And uh, we just wanted to give some tips to people who are starting out, maybe coming into their first session with uh, in a proper recording studio from their home setups. Today's uh, tip is going to be actually recording guitars from the control room. This is something that most home recording artists uh, are completely natural with because you're basically in your bedroom or you're in your single room studio, you're going into a plug-in or you have your amp right next to you. So it's not, it's kind of the natural habitat for a lot of up and coming musicians before they even come into a brick and mortar studio. So when people think of a recording session, they think of the control room and the glass with the musicians on the other side wearing headphones and just they're out there. The technicians are in here. And that's just kind of like the traditional sense of what a session is. And that works great in a traditional way where you have the band out there playing, maybe you're next to your amp, you're getting feedback. This is all stuff you can do in the control room and just makes the workflow a lot easier once you have the basic tracks. Um, I'm a firm believer that a band in a room is the way to get your basic tracks, um, not making music in a vacuum, you know, so having everybody reacting, getting the drum takes, all that is really important. But once you have that and you're going into kind of sculpting the sound and really producing uh, a recording, it's nice to have everyone you're working with next to you in the control room for communication. One other great option in modern day is using DIs and simulators. On this session, we are running the bass through a retro power strip, which is an awesome two mic pre EQ compressor, and then using the plug-in alliance Ampeg flip top. Um, this combo for this album seems to be the winner. Other options are power soaking amp heads or using speaker simulators, both available in plug-in or hardware form. But of course, all this is trying to replicate an amp in a room being recorded with microphones. So I'm going to pass it over to Ruddy to explain maybe some more of the technical stuff on how we actually pull this off in the studio and have the speakers out there with the amps in here. Hey y'all, so we got three amps here. A couple of things you want to watch out for when you are uh, got the heads in one room and the cabinets in the other, is you're going to be running some long speaker lines, which it's a powered signal. You shouldn't have any loss, uh, but you do want to be aware of number one, is your amp on and not plugged into the cabinet? Because then you'll be running your head without a load. That's a good way to fry your head. So you want to look in the back of your amp and uh, some amps you can select the impedance others are fixed some have different jacks for different impedance but make note 4 8 16 uh whether you're running it uh parallel with two cabinets or if you're just using a single cabinet uh just be aware of the impedance um Take a look on back and then go find your cabinet. Look on the back of your cabinet and uh, make sure those numbers match. 8 and 8, 16 and 16, 4 and 4, whatever the case may be. Number two, you want to make sure that the cable you're using is an actual speaker cable rather than an instrument cable. Once you ascertain that you have the right cabling and uh, your amp is plugged in, kick it on, let it warm up. Maybe I'll take you out to the other room. You can see what we're doing on the other side. Hey, 
right, so we're out here now with the cabinets. Um, we've got the Marshall hooked up to the Marshall. We're running this cabinet can be stereo or mono, and we're running it mono, and we're using the eight ohm input. As you can see, which is a good idea, if you're smart, you'll make a little mark so you know something really clear that no matter who's out here plugging this in, we'll know that they're using the right input. One thing you'll notice here is we're using um, this uh, combo as just a speed cabinet. We're using another uh, combo in there as the head. Bad idea leaving this without the speaker plugged in. Once you've uh, finished using it as a cabinet, it's a good idea to plug it back in. Uh, that way, if somebody comes out here and kicks on the combo, uh, they won't be turning on the head without the speaker load. This is how we're joining this to use it as a cabinet. When not being used as a cabinet, this will get plugged right back into the amp. So we've got the speaker run coming through a, a pass through here, which is basically just uh, a way to get through the wall without running through the door. And, you know, ideally, if you're going to run a long uh, line like this, you want to run a powered speaker uh, level rather than running a long instrument cable out to the head. The good thing about having the head in there is you have control of it while you're uh, performing. You want to adjust your sound. It's right there. It's always better to run a, a, a powered signal rather than running an instrument, a uh, long instrument lead. Uh, you'll get lost, you'll get lost in the high end. Um, this way your signal won't be really degraded because it's already been powered. How's it going in here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you can tell, this is much more than a minute. That's why we called it a king size session minute. And you've seen our first episode. Thanks for watching.